Imagine having pets this powerful and gimmicky at your very fingertips. You know for sure they're gonna have some thick meaty legislation behind them and the law would have to be layoffed for some a lot more than others. They're gonna be too dangerous for the public to freely use. A bit too spicy to be walking the same streets as your kids. You know for sure people will be finding exploits at every corner of the Pokedex. I know one in a thousand of years it'd be getting nice and toasty huffing some gloom fumes. If I can't legally own an American Pip then there's zero chance these are going into your PC without a horde of machamps busting through your windows, smashing up your PC. And before you know it, you're watching your Pokeballs on the Hydraulic Press channel. 100% a good chunk of the Pokedex would get barred from most countries. And out of that chunk, I'm going to explain why these 10-ish Pokemon would be outlawed. Imagine the follow me feature. You see it's a nice day out, you think, ah, oh, you know what? Lovely day to take the family pet Voltorb out for a walk. Go past another guy in the park, and he thought the same thing. He decided to take the family sword out for a quick float around the block. You get done badly enough carrying a knife over three inches long without a decent enough reason to have it on you. You couldn't even think about having Aegis Slash publicly go to unbox the gift of gab, Dwayne level charisma. You want to talk your way out of the place, convince them you've got a good enough reason to be walking the streets with a 67 inch knife. Maybe the laws would be a bit different since it's a sword. Guess technically it's not a knife. It's probably some old ancient law that still lets you carry whatever weapon you want around here as long as your family crest is engraved in it. And maybe they'd let you off for having the pre-evolved forms since it looks like they're sheathed at least. But you've got no excuse to be waving a lanky exposed Aegis Slash all over the place. So you take a look at a list of outlawed Pokemon and you see Aegis Slash there. Then you better not even think about mentioning Bishop, say his name too loudly in airport, you're getting put on a list. Unless you're that higher rank in the military, you're never getting a hold of one of these. That's the only setting they're gonna get greenlit in. How are you not gonna get arrested leaving your house like this? Looking like a Bionicle made of kitchen knives. How are you gonna take your Bishop out for a walk and not expect instant five star police on you? If you approached me standing next to one of these, I wouldn't even say a word. I'd just hand my shoes over to you. I know the drill. It's alright, it's calm, standard, I'm getting mugged protocol. Doesn't even matter what its motives are. Even if it's on good behaviour, this thing trips over once in a slightly crowded area. That's several GBH charges in the books right there. Muck is a rinsed out Pokemon to talk about when it comes to this kind of thing. Almost, Makago is as hot as the sun level of platitude pocket friend. But I feel like it's difficult not to at least mention a living biohazard. Especially since it already has legislation passed behind it. I mean, it's not illegal in a sense to own one, but they are set to be exterminated. So I guess... I guess it's a bit more than three points in your trainer's license right there. Unless you're owning one for your Gengar to Big Brother for some easy experience. You might as well get some good sparring sessions out of them if you're gonna wipe them out anyway. You're gonna have to keep it on the down low though. Privately owned land for your muck to slug around on. Really privately though. Like you throw one of these out in a tournament fight, you're just arrested on site. Either your muck gets to ride lightning or get preserved and slung into the toxic gulag. The only way you're owning a muck publicly is by being a mid-tier team rocket henchman or by by running a heavily monetized sewer. But then again, you want them exterminated, right? Well, why not the colorful mucks, being the healthiest of the mucks, simply just consume the bad mucks? The best thing to do here, all mucks should be sent straight to the sunny gulag of Alola to either adapt to an all rubbish diet or be consumed by the Alolan mucks for sustenance. I say Muck's kind of obvious, right? It still is. And I say, you want to take your pet Voltorb out for a roll around the park? Well, good luck to you on that one. Because Electrodes and your upside down offspring over here, you're all getting sent straight to the Gulag, and not the fun sludge water park one the Mucks get to go to. Ones that line you all up like a bowling ball machine, leading straight into a hydraulic press for some fresh content for Facebook. Other Pokemon can explode, right? That's fair enough, but they can explode in a controlled sense. These ones set off if you happen to raise the wrong eyebrow at them. So easy legislation there. Outlawed and exterminated straight. Not even passively exterminated like the muck. Hunted down, wanted dead. 
Rewards, peace of the free world. Pokemon bounty hunters who chuck away to them so they brick like the family PC. But it's not just going to be outlawed for being a marble infused with C4. Maybe you wouldn't even know it exists in the first place. Because, you know, there's that whole theory behind Voltorb existing that it's some kind of malfunction Pokeball that somehow nuts offspring off. Now if you're prototyping Pokeballs, let's say you chuck one at a Pidgey flying around and it botches into this. The government's gonna keep that one topped up. How afraid everyone would be of using these metal balls if you know there's even the smallest percent chance that this could happen. Imagine the scenes if the public found out they've been using these things for so long. Everyone loves fat Pikachu. His gut these days it might not be on point, but that gut instinct though, I mean, maybe he had the right idea. Exploud is one still fresh on my mind from past videos recently. I've spoke a fair bit, I've already been pretty loud about how loud this thing is. It's hassle enough hosting a mild house party. No one's dealing with Exploud's hanging around even the same county that they live in, let alone street. Noise with a radius of six miles. Eh nah, nah, Exploud's not lasting long on the streets. At least not until they make you a muffler. The ultimate cop-out segment for these kind of videos, second to Yahweh himself, the blob that could turn into that. Ditto's tricky because it might not be straight up illegal, but there'd have to be a lot of legislation wrapped around this thing. Probably have to add a chip into him so he could be detected as a ditto. Maybe even a chip that limits what they can transform into to begin with. Legally obligated to slap a hello me ditto sticker on him. Just anything that can stop it from freely deceiving people and pissing around with everyone. Let's say a time Tyranitar's going around, knocking on your door and running away, throwing snowballs at cars going by, leaving the whole town shook up, but then knowing that it's actually a ditto, oh, oh that's, can't, that's, that's just a big false alarm. Don't worry boys, it's just a ditto, false alarm. You can send in them a chance for some spanking now. Do you think you could handle owning an AI creature? And most of us come from a generation you could barely feed a Tamagotchi. So I can't really tell with Porygon. It'd either be the most low maintenance Pokemon you could own, or something that only a very few set of skilled people could actually use properly. Maybe there's a reason you've got to gamble your life earnings away to get one to begin with. But Porygon itself is fine. Even two, they'd actually be pretty good for cyber security, you'd imagine anyway. So naturally, you'd think Porygon Z, being the overrated sequel of the Porygons, would just be a turbo Porygon, who gets rid of 99.9% .9 of pop-up ads, who makes sure that High School Musical song you ripped off LimeWire is the official version, and not one that sounds like Mr. T singing it, one who exterminates all fit single Russians in my area. But no, Porygon Z is unstable. Your man's a sentient glitch. The thing gets its way into the wrong part of cyberspace, who knows what it's gonna brick. Z could triple the amount of fit Russian singles revolving around your IP address. It could mod Spotify so that every song you listen to slowly transforms transitions into Toy Story 2 and his neighborhood, the PS1. It could revive LimeWire for all we know. So you know for sure this would be an illegal Pokemon to just have strolling around your team. It could effectively be a virus that you can never predict. No clue what its motives could be. But I don't think it'd be on the same level of Outlawed as Electrode or Muck. They wouldn't exactly be getting hunted down. No one's gonna be chucking oids at Porygon Z to see if he works properly. But only a select few would be allowed to have access to him. Likely the people trying to patch him to work properly and be the turbo Porygon it was supposed to, and stop Andy's neighborhood being stuck in my head for 10 years straight again. As much as everyone loves dogs, chances are we've all had a dodgy run-in with one at some point or another. It's really easy to forget with all these profiles on the gram, giving them baths, putting quirky dialogue over videos of them, treating them like babies, when the only baby in existence you should be treating like a Doberman is this G-Max baby. It's easy to forget, as pampered as they are, they would consume you. But again, if I'm not allowed to own an American Pitbull, there's no chance in hell I'm getting Houndoom out of Johto Customs. Because once Houndoom gets to you, it's like having tinnitus, but for third degree burn pain. So it's not from Houndoom biting you, it's only if it decides to use fire. But you're gonna wish it went for your throat once you're dealing with the worst burn pain possible for the rest of your life. You can only hope the burn pain was bad enough to get rid of your nerves. You'd be asking stronger fire types like, oh, come on, have a go, come on, please spoil us some fire, come on, give it a 
burn, please. Just to fry any feeling left out of you. By the time you stop feeling your tinnitus burn, there's gonna be a whole new trainer class around. Gonna be getting calls off trainers I beat like, Hey, smooth skin. I haven't forgotten what your hound doom did to me. Watch your back. Anyway, I saw this big ass rattata over on Route 3. This next species would be outlawed in a weird sense. A creature that purely exists through digging. Yeah, now a lot of countries aren't gonna be having that. The amount the world relies on agriculture, you're getting barred from a good chunk of land mass. They're the physical embodiment of, take your shoes off when you come in, you're gonna ruin the house. You'd probably need a license to own one of these. You'd need to be in the right line of work for them to be useful, or at least own the right privately owned lands for them to roam around on without ruining the groundworks of towns and cities. Like Excadrill, for example, his old gimmick is dead. Digging. I mean, fair enough. Diglets exist purely through digging. They can't exist at all without ruining all of the land which they hibernate in. Arceus has at least blessed Excadrill with the gift of free will, so he can decide whether or not he wants to piece up the roads we walk on. They'd have to be given the muck treatment. Not that they're being exterminated or they need to be preserved, but I'd imagine they'd have to be outlawed outside of designated plots of land from the play on. Either that, or you can lug them around on a wheelbarrow. In Gallo, apparently it doesn't matter what fossils you use. You got a top, you got a bottom. You want to super glue those mega blocks onto your Lego? It's all fair game. Do what you want. And it's a great take on making fossil Pokemon, but ethically, how are you going to get away with this? If their original forms died off so easily, how are you going to spawn us one with its head upside down? Great, look what you've done. Look at now he's going to suffocate and starve. Nice one. And once you've made these, there's no use in even preserving them. Why would you want to? They shouldn't exist in the first place. Imagine fighting Leon. Sold out, wind and stadium. Millions around the world watching. Jumbo Charizard has you backed into the corner. I know what'll do the business to old Giga Lizardon. Go! Octavish? Ugh, what is that? You made that? That's the sc- Ugh, Charles, I'd step on it! Get it, ugh, get out of here! Good luck explaining that one to the boys in blue. You did- you did what? Some scientist out in the middle of the desert, he chucked together the two nearest fossils that we could find, and- well, well, Octavish. If you showed the police the original Pokemon, that's not too weird in this universe. Probably give you a medal for that. You could have paid off the Digger Boys a little bit more to find you the right to your fossils. You could have done a good thing here and preserved a once extinct being. Finding two mismatching fossils, playing Arceus for the day. Nah, I'm not about that. Getting locked away for a long time for that one, boy.